Okay, so today we are in leafy Surrey to meet with Mike Bradley. Mike, thanks for coming down and You're joining us. You're very welcome, my friend. Club. Very leafy. Very leafy. <laughs> very very <rusty>. green. <laughs> <laughs> cool, let's get into the question. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm Mike Bradley, like I say, guitarist from, uh, from lovely Surrey. And um, yeah, you know, I'm, I do session work as well um, and, and teach guitar, you know, to kind of bring a bit more uh, income into the world, you know, it saves me having a real job and also uh, an original artist as well. Uh, actually releasing a new EP very soon actually awesome. as well, well June the 12th, <laughs> the exact date. So yeah, I've been uh, technically self-employed for, oh man, 12 years, yeah, so uh, I, hopefully I've got another 12 years in my belt yet, you know. Yeah. And when you started, um, what was the first guitar that you picked up and why did you pick it up? Uh, the first guitar I picked up was, um, it was a classic, well actually no, if I go right, right back, um, when I was a kid, uh, I was like nine, ten, and all the kids down my road were about four or five years older than me, and uh, they started a band and that. And me being, you know, nine, ten, or if I wanted to kind of be yeah. the big kids, and um, they just handed me like a half size bass, which I think is about the same size as a regular guitar, you know. And so I initially just started bashing away on that, yeah. um, and then for my twelfth birthday, um, obviously badgered my mum and dad for a couple of years, and I got uh, one of those Hona classical guitar yeah. the one what we all start on yeah, yeah. you know with an action like a cheese grater and that kind of stuff you know um so yeah initially man, initially i wanted to play drums as well but mum was like oh, i was too loud you know you can have a guitar yeah so little did she know the, the <laughs> racket what would be coming out of me so yeah it was just it was all kind of like i'll oh, go on in I, won't, yeah. I can't play drums i'll play guitar then you know so but i, I knew i wanted to do something musical yeah. that was that was definitely even from a very early age you know i just always like Kind of music and entertaining so the that piece of tree came my way That's how that <laughs> cool. can you remember the first song that you learned well the first like picky song was the rock and roll classic ferris yakka and uh but then the first kind of real real song was about a girl by nirvana yeah. that was that i just knew of nirvana through the older lads because kurt Cobain had not long died yeah. at that point um, so uh, yeah, I was kind of all about learning Nirvana songs and stuff. So uh, yeah, about a girl, about awesome a girl. song, you know. Awesome. So at the time you started, who were your musical influences? Um, well, because I was kind of like in the, I say that mid mid to late nineties, I yeah. was started playing. So like I say, Nirvana and, and Oasis as well. Um, I kind of learned nearly every single Oasis song, yeah. which is pretty much all the same chords anyway, you know, give or take. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, was, I really liked Oasis, and then I got introduced to Eric Clapton. I was like, oh man, yeah. So kind of, yeah, Nirvana, Oasis, Eric Clapton, yeah. nice. So that was my kind of progress okay. there in, nice. in, in uh, inspiration, so to speak. Did you want to sound like anyone in particular at the time when you were learning or was it just... Yeah, I was songs? quite lucky really that the fact that I didn't really, I wanted to kind of just always be myself really. Um, and I wanted to learn other people's songs and stuff, but I wasn't like, I want to sound like them. Yeah. It was just, I want to sound cool on the guitar really, yeah. so. Yeah, and I think that's quite good that I didn't want to, I didn't seek out to try and sound like anyone else, you know. Just to progress and get Yeah, just get better as best I could, yeah. yeah, yeah. So who are your current musical influences? Ooh, well, I would say, well, I saw Eric Gales like two days ago, yeah. so he's he's on my mind straight away because he's just, musicianship is just ridiculous and the fact that he's an incredible guitar player and plays upside down, so it just yeah. freaks you out even more, you know. Um, and uh, I mean, I've always liked blues and jazz stuff. And uh, Richie Cotson, big fan of him, and, and Lenny Kravitz uh, will always be a big Prince yeah, yeah. fan as well. Definitely. You know, um, that was that was a hard one when he yeah. passed away. I think I think every musician thought the same yeah. thing there. You no, know, when he went, it's like, oh man, that, that hurts. You know. Um, so yeah, that kind of funky rock, you know, stuff. But then throwing a bit of blues, jazz. Robin Ford's a great, yeah. uh, great player and, and great musician as well. Um, and uh, oh god, band like Foo Fighters, I think are great, you know, big in the rock and roll kind of term. Uh, so yeah, kind of a mixed bag a little bit, you know, right. funky rock with a bit of jazzy stuff in yeah. there as well. You know. cool. Have you come across anything new that you're listening to that you recommend? Um, I suppose the newest artist I really like is a guy called Gary Clark Jr. Yeah, big fan. Um, he's awesome, yeah. and uh, I think it's the same age as me or similar age yeah, anyway, yeah. you know. And uh, yeah, he's got that kind of cool, the R&B, kind of current R&B, and then ties in that blues rock stuff in there as well, and wicked singer, and yeah. you know, really cool, just a 
a nasty guitar player, you know. Pretty, yes, yeah, guitar. absolutely, yeah. he's awesome, you know, and he's he's, he's super smooth and yeah, cool, yeah, isn't he? Yeah. You know, he just doesn't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I love that, you know. So uh, yeah, I'll probably say yeah, he's he's kind of new current artist. Yeah. So I'm um, yeah massively into definitely. What is your favourite style of music? So you said that you listen to a different uh, genres, but what's your actual yeah. favourite? Yeah, I would definitely so? say yeah, blues, blues, yeah. rock and roll kind of stuff is uh, that's where I kind of feel most at home. Um, yeah, I like playing a lot of different things like no country as well and yeah. stuff like that. But uh, but yeah, if I was no when I'm in the car, yeah, kind of bluesy rock and roll yeah, kind of yeah. stuff is where I'm like, yeah, man, you know, like thing. I say, turn that fuzz up and yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, rock it. <laughs> okay. So looking at your guitars now. Yes. Um, watching a few of your YouTube videos, you have um, a few tasty guitars. Yeah, lucky boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. very lucky boy. But um, which of your guitars is your favourite and which is your go-to? My my go-to and it's it's weird, you know. I mean, I've, I've bought a few guitars over the years but my, my number one still is and probably always will be my Sunburst Strat yeah. which I got in 1999 I think you know it's a 96 Strat um, I expect you've seen it yeah, yeah. before you came and that because I've just been playing it so long it's like it's me yeah. you know even if I don't if I go you know, a month or so about playing it if I kind of start playing the other ones a bit more it's still my trusty friend you know so uh as Stevie said, you know, the first wife, so to speak, you know, so, uh, yeah, I'd say the Sunburst Strat. Yeah, awesome. Big question, do mm. you name your guitars? I, I do, <laughs> I do name my, not, not all of them, some of them are just that, you know, but uh, I, I, about a year ago I got, um, for an example, I bought a Gibson ES345, which is amazing, yeah. it's a guitar I've always wanted to have, and um, I'm a massive Back to the Future fan, yeah, yeah. and obviously Mighty McFly had a 345, and my first guitar teacher, um, God bless him, he, he, he had a 335, no, very similar guitar. So I call that guitar Alan McFly because yeah. my teacher was called Alan and obviously Mike McFly. So I've got that and I've got my Telecaster's called Lola. Yeah. I've got an acoustic called Betty. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and it's not like I think about, I remember when I bought the Telecaster, I was walking out the shop to my car yeah. and I was like, you're going to be called Lola. Lola. It That's just, it. that was it, done, you know. So um, I am a sad man. But that my guitars are women. I remember someone said to me, oh, why, why are your guitar girls? I was like, well, I don't like the thought of caressing a man's neck. Yes, you know, true, if you're into yeah. that, cool. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> That's cool. That's actually good to hear. All of my guitars have names. Yeah. Um, but you're actually the first person that has admitted um, that you name See, they all like do that. deep yeah, down, yeah, I think you know. Well. We're, we're just you know, open enough and uh, comfortable with ourselves to admit it. There you go. <laughs> so if you could have any guitar, uh, money aside, what mm. would it be? Uh, I think it would have to be a, no, a vintage um, Strat, you know, yeah. like a 1960, 1959 um, Strat, Sunburst, you yeah. know, Rosewood, well, think, uh, Maple uh, Neck, Rosewood yeah, yeah. Fingerboard, you know, that that would always be kind of the holy grail for me, you know. Of course, you've got the 59 yeah. as Paul, but I'm, I'm a Strat boy, so yeah, yeah a kind of late 50s, early 60s Strat, which are about 15, 20 grand. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Cool. Fender, I hope you're listening. Yes, Fender. <laughs> <laughs> what amp do you use at the moment? Um, I've got a few amps, but uh, I've recently signed up with a company called Hampstead yes. Amplifiers, yeah. and they, they truly make amazing amps. I'm, I'm so happy with my sound at the moment, and uh, I use uh, it's the Hampstead Artist 20 uh, RT reverb and tremolo yeah. built into it, but it's a uh, a beautiful sound amp and, it's, and it takes pedals really well if you're, if you're into that kind of stuff as well. Um, so yeah, the Hamps is my kind of go-to amp now. Um, and I've also got um, a Cornford MK50 which I've had for about 11 years and um, a Marshall and Fender yeah. heads and combos as well. But the Hamps is definitely my my number one. Number you know, one so it's it. a I can't rate them enough. They're yeah. great, great amps, you know. So. Uh, yeah, definitely check one out if you, if you can. Well, you know, so, uh, they're based in Cambridge, kind of fairly new. Been around for about three, four years, something like that. But, um, ah, beautiful man, beautiful. Awesome. You're just, just happy playing chords, yeah. don't mind lead stuff, you know. So, uh, yes, the Hampstead is my one. new moment. How did that um, relationship come about? That I, um, I, I kind of contact, I kind of seen her about, and um, I wanted to kind of, I was in the market to get a new amp because uh, I was using the Cornford, and it's a great amp, but it, I can't rely on it. It's yeah. blown up a couple of times and things like that. And I want an amp I can rely on, yeah. you know. And I wanted to kind of build a relationship. And I was going to, uh, I actually contacted another company beforehand, but when I tried one of their amps out, 
uh, it, <laughs> it died in the shop. I was yeah. like, that's a sign. Uh, and it, but I, I kind of contacted Hampstead and kind of told them about myself, and they kind of knew of me a little yeah. bit. And I went down and met them and play, just played one of Amps about. Well, I was there for about four hours, yeah. I think, you know. But I just couldn't stop. If you if you can't stop playing any piece of gear, yeah. you know, be it it's a pedal, same. a guitar, yeah. an amp, whatever, you know, like yeah, that that's a very good sign. If you play something, you're like, oh yeah, okay. So um, yeah, I plugged it in and I'm, I just couldn't stop playing, you yeah. know. So um, and yeah, they're lovely, lovely people, and uh, I know if anything, nothing has gone wrong. But if it did, I knew that they'd they help me out. You know, I've got yeah, the support so there if I need it, you know. So uh, but yeah, so I kind of met up with them. April of 2016 yeah. and uh, got on board of them, um, yeah, January this year, really, you know, properly. Awesome. Nice. So you mentioned a few pedals. Mm. Um, so do you like to use pedals on your playing or do you mainly rely on your amp? I, I used to always rely on the amp, you know, yeah. when when I was using the Cornford, for example, because that's got an amazing overdrive on it. Like, you don't need an overdrive yeah, yeah. pedal, you know. Um, I mean, when I was a younger player, it actually, even, actually, when I was younger, I used to just have a Wawa and a Boss SD1. I had a Marshall head at the time. Um, but I had the gain going all the time, yeah. and then gain from that, I would just gain, 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 you know. And now I like a bit more, I like to hear than that, like a clean overdrive, yeah. you know. Um, so, um, yeah, now nowadays I kind of set the amp so it's, um, you know, on the on the turn of breaking up, and then kind of kick in overdrive pedals, um, like a tube screamer type pedal or, or stuff like that, um, and fuzzes if need be, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, I've now, over the last kind of couple of years, gone down the pedal route yeah. for uh, my thing, but I don't like relying pedals too much because the more stuff there, I think the more can go wrong, yeah, you know. Yeah, so sure. um, yeah, it's using having the essentials there. But yeah, at the moment, pedals are uh, my kind of friends. Friends. <laughs> Do you have a favourite pedal? <laughs> um, have I got a favourite pedal? Um, one what always is amazing when I'm I've been, I've been when I do studio work for sessions and stuff. The pedal um, called the King King Fuzz pedal by yeah. a company called Bigfoot. Uh, they were a Bigfoot engineer. I think they're just Bigfoot now, and that's an awesome pedal. It's it's great. Um, can't praise them enough. Um, and also, uh, I always have a it's a Seymour Duncan 805 yeah. overdrive pedal, which is basically their take on a tube screamer. Um, and again, that's a lovely one. So yeah, yeah if, if I've got to be greedy, I've two that for the dirty fuzzy yeah, kind yeah. of stuff, and then. The 805, which can get me out of trouble, yeah, you know, no. <laughs> and then just try my lie on these, you know. What have you got planned for the rest of 2017? Planned this, so like I mentioned, I've got a EP coming out on June the 12th, uh, which I'm really excited about getting it out. And um, I released a, a video from one of the tracks um, a couple of days ago, and yeah. have lovely feedback, it's been really nice. So, which is nice, you know, yeah, you yeah. do a bit of work, you never know what people are going to think, you know. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna release that, and uh, I want to get out and start playing it live. I've got a cool um, trio of musicians yeah. uh, who, who play with me in my band now, um, so I, I want to take that out. And ideally, I'd love to tour it. It's just making sure it's all manageable, and yeah. you know, it's all everything's all money these days, isn't it? You know, so um, so yeah, so I really like to push that and uh, and continue building my my name out yeah. there as much as possible for uh, to people because there's. You know, starting to people starting to know me now, but I, I want more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of your band? Uh, it's just it's under my name. It's yeah, uh, yeah so I mean, it's Mike Bradley. So uh, you know, for for years now, I've been in so many bands, and one band in particular, I was in a band called Biff Tech, and you know, my dearest friends and everything like that. And uh, we did quite well at the time, uh, and like head, headline the Shep Shepherd Bush Empire and the Astoria when it was there, we did yeah. really well, and then. Unfortunately, bands do it kind of folded, and we, we did try and get back together again a couple of years ago, but it just wasn't yeah. the same, you know. And with other bands I've been in, I haven't had that same uh, relationship as I had when I was with uh, the Biff Tech Boys because we, we were like a gang, we were, we were a group of friends, we hang out socially, yeah, and yeah. all the other bands I've been in since then it's just almost like a job, you know, you turn up for rehearsal, you know, never kind of yeah, hang yeah. out socially. And so having that kind of report, I just was finding it hard and egos and stuff like that and people letting you down. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, about 2015 and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do it on my own, you know? And uh, that's when I released my first EP. And um, again, got great little yeah. feedback, you know, from that and got BBC introducing and things like that. And then that's why I thought, you know, let me try and 
Because I just did that as an experiment, yeah, you know. That's it. So um, I kind of put an ad out for a bass player, drummer, and other guitar player, and um, got Rob, Julio, and Tom on board. And uh, yeah, so at the moment, no, I, I didn't want it to be like egotistical, like oh, Mike Bradley. So, but I just yeah. did it because I just got fed up with people letting me down all the time. So I thought, let's just give it a go, give man, a go. And see what happens. You know, good. yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, we only can try. Yeah, we'll make sure we keep our eye out. I out for when I hope so, yeah, definitely, man, out. yeah, definitely, yeah. So well, I've got, i um, doing a gig at the Bedford in Ballam on August the 2nd, it's like a showcase yeah. night, um, where different acts will get up, do a few songs, and then get up again later on. So it'd be quite a cool, and Bedford's quite a known, intimate, kind of yeah, cool yeah. venue to kind of play at. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Cool. And it's the day for my birthday as well, okay. so there we'll you go. Definitely come down, take come down, man, yeah, right? August the 2nd, yeah, it'd awesome. be great. I actually took a few lessons with you yeah. a couple of years ago and it was all because of a video I saw you posted on YouTube. Um, how did you get into blogging and how has it helped your guitar career? I got into it, um, I, I was kind of in between bands, as, as they say, you know, and um, I felt very, uh, like I wasn't really progressing anywhere and I saw a few people started doing this YouTube thing and whatnot and I thought, oh, it'd be a cool way to kind of, as a business-wise, to generate a bit more income, no, get my name out yeah. as a tutor and also as a, as a guitar player in general, really. Um, and so uh, I just did it, you know. <laughs> I just started doing it, and when I see the early videos, you know, I can see I'm really awkward, and uh, you know, because it's kind of weird at first talking to a camera. But uh, but I think I, st I posted my started getting into it properly in about 2011. Well, yeah. I say properly, started doing it, and kind of took it seriously, kind of 2015, yeah. kind of time, you know. Um, so yeah, now it's like my new mistress. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And how often do you vlog? Uh, on YouTube, I, I would do two videos a week. Yeah. I do, you know, unless something gets really busy, it's one. But yeah, most of the time, Wednesdays and Fridays. And then uh, Instagram as well. I'll try and put, you know, either a photo or yeah. something, you know, if every other day, something like that. And then a video kind of once or twice a week, you know. It's just, uh, you know, nowadays, you know, if you, if you hark back to kind of 10 years ago, you, whoever your favourite band or artist was, you'd love to know yeah, your yeah. behind the scenes thing. And now we've got that cool thing where we can. So, yeah, I try and do a good, you know, on Facebook and Instagram, yeah. not Facebook, sorry, YouTube and Instagram, they're my two main hubs I like. And I've got Facebook as well, of course. But, uh, so yeah, but yeah, definitely a good few times yeah. a week I will uh, bring people into my world. Nice one. <laughs> and what advice would you have for anyone who's starting in the digital social media? I would say the number one thing is you want to be yourself. You yeah. don't want to put on, you know, a game face. Of course, you know, you always got to be a little bit more um, animated yeah. with movements and stuff when you're playing, when you're kind of talking to the yeah, camera yeah. to engage people more. If you're just, hello, I'm Mike Bradley. <laughs> so you got to do, hi, Mike Bradley. You've got to kind of be a yeah, bit yeah. more kind of up, you know, but yeah, just try and, be yourself as much as possible and also I think when I started like last year I kind of took it up a bit more and did regular content you know like say at least twice a week and I noticed started getting better engagement so uh, yeah regular content try and put stuff up you know even if it's just once a week or yeah. or say that if you can't do once a week say to people right every other Tuesday I'll be putting up a yeah, video or time. whatever you know yeah. Uh, so then, people, you know, even if you only got ten people following, they're like, oh, okay, every other Tuesday, no, like they know where to yeah. come. Uh, and I, instead of it just being sporadic and just putting up stuff here and there, kind yeah, of thing, yeah, you yeah. know, so, which I used to do myself. And you're wondering why no one watching me because they don't know when yeah, the hell yeah. to tune in. Yeah. So uh, yeah, be yourself and and try and keep it regular. And uh, if you book them, they will come. There you go. Name that quote. <laughs> <laughs> So I know you have an answer to this question on YouTube. Yeah. Um, so if you're a beginner guitarist, um, what advice would you give to them or what could they do to actually become a better guitarist? I think um, with how it is nowadays with, with YouTube and stuff, and there's such a vast resource out there that it can be uh, very overwhelming to like, I want to learn this, I want to learn that, I want to learn that. And then you know, they're trying to learn modes when they can't yeah, play yeah. a C chord. Um, so I think you, you, do, you do need to have that foundation there so literally I mean, when I think back to myself you know I learned a major scale and then learnt your open chords and you know, trying to get yeah, around yeah. that so I think it's literally just taking it in bite-sized chunks tr instead of trying to eat the whole cake you know just bite-sized chunks and you know get your chords down and, and get used to doing open chords and, and stuff like that and then move on to bar chords yeah. then you know 
and then you know if you can do CG and F open, try CG and F bar, you know, and then, and then kind of start looking at a bit of lead playing after a few months, stuff like that. So uh, it is. I mean, I think you know my generation, we were just before the internet went boom, yeah, yeah. you know, so uh, it was easier to do that. All we had was guitar magazines and and the, and the CDs, yeah. you know. I was going to say records, but I'm not that old. <laughs> Um, but you know what I mean, like, and now because you know, if you want to learn like a Guffy Govan thing, you just type in Guffy Govan yeah, yeah, lick, and, and if you've only been playing guitar for a month, you're like, oh, I can't do it, and then they just put the guitar down, don't touch it. So, yeah, just bite-sized chunks and try and get that foundation, you know. So, what do we need to do? Is build a house, and you need a foundation yeah. or it all falls down. So, um, yeah, it's just that's what I would say, and just take it in your, you know, one step at a time and try to try and do it. I think cool. in one, you know. Last question. Yes, mate. What is your favourite tune of all time? Oh God! Big one. My favourite tune of all time. Oh man, I could be here for hours <laughs> thinking of that. I mean, um, let me think about this. Let me think about this. Oh my God! I've got like load of songs yeah. going in my head. I'm like, do I want to say that? You know, I mean, I mean, I could. The one was in my head, I don't know why, All on the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. You know, that's all, I don't know if it's my favourite, but that's what's but come in my head. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So just because, you know, as a guitar player, you've got everything there. You know what I mean? And it's three damn chords. Yeah. And, he, and he was able to kind of fuse everything in there. You know, some blues stuff. And then he's, he's using chords in a solo as well, you know. So... Um, Am I gonna go with that? Am I gonna have that as a statement as my favourite song of all time? Um, do you know what we could do? Something uh, by George Howard, Beatles. Beatles. There yeah. we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll put that one down. Yeah. So cool, Mike. Thank you very much. You're for very welcome. Down. Thanks Enjoy all for watching. Guitar Club. Thank you. Guys, keep strumming, keep practicing, and we'll see you again next week. Take care, man.